For about as long as humanity has had the command of language, we have fantasized about complex communication with animals. The talking animal is an ever-present theme in 10,000 years of human stories and modern media. From Aesop's fables to Dr. Doolittle to Salem the Talking Cat from Sabrina the Teenaged Witch to Eliza Thornberry, we have always fantasized about conversing with species outside our own. And sure, scientific consensus and common sense tells us that very basic interspecies communication is possible. Every cat owner knows that slow blinks mean I am comfortable with you. Every dog owner knows that you need to spell out the word W-A-L-K because Fido will freak the fuck out if he hears the W word. Some species of birds are even capable of fully mimicking human speech. Polly want a cracker, and Polly know that if Polly squawk, Polly want a cracker, Polly get a cracker. But complex and spontaneous communication between animals and humans has proven elusive. Even within a species, it's been difficult to tell if most animals can communicate more to one another than just warning, stay away, I'm ready to mate, or help me, mommy, I'm a hungry baby bird and I need you to spit some pre-chewed food down my nasty little throat. And what little we do know is the result of decades of scientific study of animals, both in captivity and in the wild. Throughout the years, uh, many scientists and dedicated hobbyists have also tried to see if it's possible to bridge the gap in communication between humans and animals to somewhat mixed results. From Clever Hans to Coco the gorilla to Bunny the creepily self-aware dog on TikTok, many forays into animal-human communication have proven to be nothing more than clever parlor tricks. This episode features another one of those. Like Penny Patterson, the caregiver of Coco the gorilla, John C. Lilly and some of his researchers genuinely believed that they were embarking on important research in animal communication. Unlike Penny Patterson, John C. Lilly focused his efforts not on primates, but on cetaceans, specifically bottlenose dolphins. Also unlike Penny Patterson, John C. Lilly also dosed his subjects with LSD and hired a 24-year-old college dropout to live in a flooded house with one of them for 10 weeks, during which you'd have to regularly masturbate the dolphin. Welcome back to Respect the Dead, the podcast where we do not... Sweaty. It's no surprise. That everybody celebrated your demise And now worms are eating your eyes So don't you worry your rotten head As you sleep in your sodden bed It's time to respect the Let's not go. (laughs) I don't want to go to the dolphin (laughs) house, mom. (laughs) We're going to the dolphin (laughs) house. Okay. um, Please bleep. (laughs) Davi, please beep that out because we can't get limited ads for the first minute ago. They'll know also, what we're saying. Out, <laughs> bleeps are funnier. <laughs> Just bleep words at random throughout this episode. I don't care. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Hoots. I'm Kaylin. Uh, and today's episode is a recommendation from Cadillac Kim, one of our Patreon uh, patrons. And if you'd like to recommend the subject for a future episode, join our Patreon at the Weirdos tier or higher in order to access our suggestion cemetery. And we will probably use it someday. We only take subject submissions from the suggestion cemetery. Please do not spam our DMs. No, we also don't know how to read, so we get someone to read yeah. the Suggestion Cemetery ones so, to us. Yeah, so sometimes I'm like just receiving these DMs and I'm like, oh, I know they're telling me someone to do, but I don't know who it is. I'm actually reading this entire script. Um, I've written it out in emojis. That's the only way I know how to I w- yeah. <laughs> I was literally about to say, when we're looking at our phones, it's just scrawled <laughs> pictures, but I guess emojis <laughs> makes more sense. <laughs> emojis, scrawled pictures, potato, potato. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment with the intro rewritten as emojis. (laughs) Oh my God, I can't wait to see those. (laughs) (laughs) 
So John C. Lilly was born on January 6th, 1915. Epiphany. Insurrection Day. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I do know a little bit about this. Okay. In that I remember, like, as you were talking about this, I got this, like, visceral flashback to, like, a flooded house. Like, a a, a wet house and somebody jerking off a dolphin. But that's the only connection I have to it. That is probably the most infamous thing um, because like anything involving bestiality, obviously, like... People on the internet are going to want to talk about it. People want to talk about it, yeah. But this entire story is fucking... is is batshit. It is... It is cocoa, coconuts, cocoa, cuckoo for cocoa puffs. It is wild. Okay, so John C. Lilly. John C. Lilly. He's a Capricorn. Of course. Mm. So he was born to a family of wealthy bankers, but he developed a love of science at an early age and had no interest in entering the family profession. According to Lily, when he was a teenager, his best friend died after falling off of a horse. So he decided from then and there to pursue a career as a doctor to, quote, prevent this from ever happening again to anyone that I love. (laughs) Um, (laughs) As we know, uh, doctors are there as soon as you fall off your horse to catch you before you break your neck. Mm -hmm. Anyone a doctor loves never dies. (laughs) (laughs) and if they do die the doctor didn't love them enough oh that's true okay so his best friend by the way was uh was named dick and Mm -hmm. lily's dad was also named dick so we're gonna call him daddy dick for the rest of the episode okay Uh, don't bother censoring anything we're getting 100 (laughs) demonetized regardless it's just his name (laughs) daddy dick not, like what am I supposed to call him Richard he didn't he didn't go by Richard I respect no. I respect people's preferred name and pronouns yeah we are not dead naming daddy dick <laughs> so daddy dick really wanted Lily to go to an Ivy League school to major in business but instead Lily got a scholarship to study biology at Caltech daddy dick lets him go so after he gets to Caltech, the school figures out that Lily's actually rich because, you know, they gave him a scholarship and they yanked that scholarship right the fuck away. <laughs> Do rich people not get scholarships? Do you have it to must be have been It must have been a needs-based one because, I mean, okay. definitely there are some scholarships that are just I thought, Yeah, like, like merit-based or whatever, yeah. right? Or like but I think merit. most of them, most of them tend to be a combination of merit and need. So okay. they must have been like. It would have been oh. really funny if they were like, <laughs> like I know that you qualified for this, but you rich, rich. So <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you we're can gonna pay take us. that and, back. Yeah. And also, does anybody else think it'd be really cute if there was another wing on this library? Well, that's the thing. Daddy Dick steps in and sets a tr- sets a trust up for his tuition, okay. and he also ends up donating money to the school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> so I have a feeling like Daddy Dick must have been a little bit embarrassed by that. Uh, he should be. Yeah, rich people should be embarrassed. Like, yeah, just in time. general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> just like as a matter of course. <laughs> people who are watching us on YouTube, um, keep like a counter. I've got like a drink on either side. One, you know, I'm double fisting the way that you. It do. would be like really funny if every time you lifted up your drink, it was a completely different. It was glass a different container, with a completely yeah. different drink in it. <laughs> like Everybody twelve watching. around your table, like in signs. <laughs> Everybody watching on YouTube, keep like a drink counter. I've got, I've got the the metal glass, and I've got the spooky glass. Are either of them glass? Um, the spooky glass is glass. Okay. <laughs> My brain was like the metal <laughs> got the glass. 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 I was like, <laughs> the metal glass, the glass glass. The paper glass. <laughs> <laughs> the straw glass. It's <sighs> nice and fancy of you to not call them cups. <laughs> <laughs> in, in my house, we eat dishes and we drink from glasses. That's so beautiful. Throughout his undergraduate studies at Caltech, Lily and his daddy are still fighting over where Lily is going to continue his graduate studies. So daddy's like, okay, fine, I'll let you go study science for undergrad because that doesn't count or matter. 
but yeah. for graduate school, you have to become a business boy. And Lily was like, no. So Lily would later tell an anecdote about rushing to be at his father's side after Daddy Dick had been in a car accident. And he he came out of a three-week coma, saw Lily, and said, you're going to Harvard, to which Lily replied, no, Dad, I'm going to Dartmouth. Welcome back. He's such a relatable <laughs> protagonist. <laughs> That's so... <laughs> <laughs> That's so cunty. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. I know. You're going maybe to Harvard. Not... <laughs> no, I'm going to Dartmouth. Welcome back. <laughs> Like, I know that I'm, like, making him sound gay, but that's just my voice. And also, he probably is gay. He had, he jerked off a dolphin. <laughs> Everything no, that I've heard jerk about. jerk off a dolphin. That's the straightest oh, that's thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, regular old bestiality? I have heard time and time <laughs> again on Twitter that that is a homosexual thing. Mm. Letting a dolphin cuck you? That's, that's straight culture. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, he married his first wife, Mary Crouch Lily, in 1936. <laughs> she sounds like a goblin. <laughs> Little Mary Crouch. Mary Crouch. I would That's hate disgusting. to be named Crouch. I would change it. Yeah. So he married her in 1936, and in 1938, he began medical school at Dartmouth. So eventually, um, he decided that he wanted to pursue more of a career in medical research rather than therapeutic practice, uh, which... More What? More There's more There's more research. Yeah. Medical research. Yeah. As opposed to, like... You can justify yeah. anything in the you 1900s. Can justify anything in, yeah. <laughs> you can look at as much as you want if it's for research oh, purposes, yeah. but, like... You know, unless you're working in a fertility clinic, like if you're just a doctor, yeah. you don't get to see that much. Yeah. And I don't think they had IVF back then. I think IVF was just like coming into a turkey baster and shooting up your wife. I don't know if you into the turkey baster. <laughs> Do you into a cup, suck it up in the turkey yeah. baster and then push yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you're like <laughs> sounding more sense. with the end of the turkey baster and just like have it pressed ready to like suck it up. <laughs> that's gotta well, now be you're making it sound something. fun <laughs> we are getting to this episode is gonna be fucking this, age gated yeah, this, this episode is going to be a red dollar sign <laughs> unmonetizable please join our patreon they're actually gonna take ad revenue from other videos to make up for what we did to their to their platform <laughs> with this one but I do like us returning to form and getting back into the knees for an episode. Oh my god, we've been so chill for so long. I mean, we've I been know. so well, depressed for so long. Yeah. And then we kind of like had a few chill episodes where we were like, let's not be sad. But then now we're now we're returning to the to our. We need to get back roots. to unhinged. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting back into Daddy's balls. Yeah. <laughs> into Daddy Dick's balls. Hmm. Okay, so he so Dartmouth Dartmouth at the time like their their graduate program was like more geared towards people who wanted to become doctors, like practicing family doctors, where's, that kind of thing, surgeons. So he transferred to the University of Pennsylvania, eventually graduating there with his medical degree in 1942. Where's Dartmouth? I don't know, on the East Coast. If you're know. watching this Tell us where all of the Ivy League schools are. I wouldn't know. <laughs> if you're watching this from Dartmouth, where are you? <laughs> so I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you like a little fun fact about UPenn during World War II, and then we're gonna run to ads, okay? Okay. So fun fact, while at UPenn, Lily enrolled in a class entitled How to Build an Atomic Bomb. And he and several uh, he and several other students transcribed all of their notes from the class and published a published a book with the same title. And the director of the Manhattan Project, General Leslie Groves, attempted to suppress the publication of the book, but he was unable to because it wasn't classified data. It was data that they were teaching at University of Pennsylvania. So he's like, wait, 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 wait. People aren't supposed to know that. And then they're like, too late, bestie. It's already up on Amazon, Amazon ebooks. <laughs> like, 
sitting there with my Kindle as I built an atomic <laughs> bomb, being like, wait, wait, go back a page, go back a page. I want... <laughs> wait. No, you know, it's probably right. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> How much plutonium again? <laughs> Is it okay if it was a heaping tablespoon? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really do it by taste. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some plutonium ads. <laughs> okay. Can I still buy the book? Um, I don't know. Look up how to build an atomic bomb. Just Google how to build an atomic bomb and see if you this can find it. I'm not going to be able to make... They're not going to let me fly into <laughs> New oh, no. York this month. <laughs> Book history. Oh, this one's empty. For science. There we go. Now I'm safe. No, the making of the atomic bomb. But this was how to build? That's insane. How to build an atomic bomb. Yeah. That's literally... In <laughs> nope. You can't. I'm sure it's they only printed on... like five copies. Oh, that's fair. This was like a university press, right? I probably, I don't know. It's probably just for nerds. Yeah. It was a bunch of like university students who wrote it based on some notes okay. they took in class. So I'm sure they printed yeah. like five copies. During the Second World War, while Lily was still a graduate student, he helped one of his professors, a guy called H. Cuthbert Batsett, uh, develop a device for measuring the effects of high altitudes on pilots. It was like a, a gas measuring device. I don't know how it works because um, I don't care. Batsett's ethos was that a scientist shouldn't feel comfortable experimenting on other people if they weren't willing to experiment on themselves. And he kind of passed that ethos on to Lily. So uh, Lily- my friend the fly. So true. Uh, so when, when Lily was like helping him develop this device, he tested the high altitude devices on himself at like essentially like great personal risk. And it probably got him a little high though. Oh my god, I'm sure he loved it. Yeah. You no, know how I you, bet get he up, liked you get up, you get a little it. I dizzy. I bet he was a nasty. Yeah. No, he was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to get so fucking dizzy today. <laughs> I love Is it. Is anyone going to get really dizzy with me? Me when I got really into spinning around when I was like five. I was super into spinning for a bit. I Not like spinning classes. I was into classes, a, a strobe light and throwing things in the air and watching them fall oh, in like a stop motion yeah. kind of way and being like, this is just like what being drugs, being on drugs is like. <laughs> That's right. People do love being dizzy. People do um, be diz. <laughs> people do. <laughs> do you be diz? I'm getting I diz do, this I, weekend. I'm like basic. I, I love dizzing so much. They call me dizzy. <laughs> I might go diz after this. <laughs> <laughs> so Batsit would encourage Lily to publish his first solo scientific paper uh, on their findings, which is also cool because they were working together, but he would like encouraged him to publish it by himself. Or maybe it wasn't cool. Maybe that was like, mm, I don't. Maybe it's like, I don't want my name on this. You can this. take my name you know off what? of this. <laughs> yeah. You know what? This is your project. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you did all the work and you know i think it really shows yeah <laughs> so let's just keep your name on it i mean we've all had to say that to somebody at some point just like hey i don't actually need credit on this video <laughs> good actually i'm actually union so i'll get in trouble if you put my name on it <laughs> i'm gonna start saying that <laughs> In the early 1950s, Lily, with his daddy's money, developed something called a Bavatron, which was daddy a- Daddy Diz. Daddy, daddy Diz's daddy dollars <laughs> paid for the Bavatron, which was a device with, like, straight out of a science fiction movie with little electrodes that would be placed on the surface of a rabbit's brain or any animal's brain, Perfect. which would then- project images of the electrical impulses coming from the brain. So like this is, I mean, a lot of our current medical technology, like if you go to a, a hospital and stuff, is kind of like the descendant of the the Babatron, like 
all the of daddy does a tron the dad <laughs> daddy daddy dizzed into into the medical <laughs> technology community <laughs> and what made a baby were the Babatron. images supposed to show were they like, like interpreting them like lines on a chart oh okay. you know how you, the the ones that you it's see like, when you go I to the swear hospital that's a carrot oh, yeah okay. it's that it's and then he would he would like teach people how to like interpret um the lines that are being made from the Sounds electrical book one. electrical impulses. So the rabbits that he started with were unanesthetized during these procedures. And again, it wasn't placed on the surface of the skull, it was placed on the surface of the brain. So they were vivisected without uh anesthesia. And then rabbits electrodes were placed on their brains. Yeah, really tiny little ones. That's so funny. It's so cute. It's I'm not cute when you attach electrodes to them. I think in general we should keep skulls closed. Mm. Yeah. I like it when my skull is closed. Yeah, I um, like it closed right up, covered in skin and hair. Mm -hmm. I know that that might make me like baby phobic or whatever because their skulls aren't closed all the way. But Ew. fight yeah, me, gross. babies. Yeah, keep your like fontanelle out of my face. <laughs> So Lily goes on to work with the National Institutes of Mental Health, or NIM, where he continues to study electrical impulses and the brain. So his, his goal was to see if, I mean, he had many goals. Uh, one of them was like to discover what consciousness is, which I think is something that, you know, people are always continually trying to do. And it's, it's kind of like eluded us. Um, but one of his major goals was to see if parts of the brain could be stimulated without trauma or damage to the brain tissue using electrical impulses on primates. So a lot of this research proves really valuable. He discovers where the pain and pleasure centers of the brain are uh, and his research Hot. into, yeah, his research into electrical stimulation of certain brain function essentially leads to the development of things like cochlear implants because we can stimulate yeah. parts of the brain that have stopped functioning due to like trauma or something with things like implants. So like this is important research. Okay, well, sorry at the dumbass rabbits then, but like, <laughs> yeah, sorry at your brains, but like you, have, you're gonna get a little diz, and that's fine. Yeah, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but you know what? We'll make your pleasure center a little diz too. So like, yeah, we'll you had to go through center. all that trauma, but like, it was worth it in the end. For us, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks, girl. Thanks, girly pop. Thanks, rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> Lily claimed that the macaques he experimented on without anesthesia felt little pain. <laughs> Quote. I believe that. Word, right? <laughs> yeah. He said, yeah, with this technique, electrodes could be implanted in the brain without using anesthesia. During the process of implantation, there was no more pain in the animal than that of a needle prick in the scalp. Short lengths of hypodermic needle tubing were quickly pounded through the scalp into the skull. Ah! <laughs> These stainless steel guides furnish passageways for the insertion of electrodes. So basically giant fucking needles were nailed into the skull. And he's like, see, we did it painlessly. Well, does the skull have, the skull doesn't have nerve endings. Your brain probably doesn't either. Your skin like, does. Why would they? Yeah, but like I get piercings and it's not that bad. Like I get tattoos and I'm like right. chill. Like... It, I don't it know. probably we like should... it feels like it should be way more painful than it probably actually is. I think like mm. let's I don't ask think someone. There's like nerve endings in your brain. Yeah. If has anyone at, had any uh, brain trauma? <laughs> wants to tell us about it. If you're at Dartmouth, and tell us if you're at Dartmouth, tell us where you are. Assuming that you're all doctors, tell us if it would hurt to nail a a nail into a, a rat skull. Has anyone experimented with trepidation or trepanation? That's what it is. Trepanation. Trepanation, yeah. And if so, did it hurt? And if so, could you do it on me? There are so <laughs> many ghosts in my skull. <laughs> the, Let I, them these out. These need out. <laughs> it's getting so full in there. <laughs> it, like, honestly, I think it would fix me. <laughs> If you let a few out, I might remember how to read. Yeah, like you never know, right? And sometimes I think you should try. And I'm like, 
whatever that scientist you mentioned earlier who was like, I think you should do it yourself if you're going to experiment on something. Yeah. That's me. I agree. So all of this mild animal torture wasn't all necessarily for noble reasons because he was working for the government and this was the Cold War and the government was yeah. super interested in the practical applications of Lily's research for the use of mind control. Yes. Which when you're not living in a pulp sci-fi film is basically just just torture like so lily explored the possibility of using sleep deprivation and electrodes inserted into the pain centers of the brain to brainwash subjects and the goal was ultimately <laughs> human application i love the idea that that is brainwashing somebody when it's, it's just keeping them up it's late just, it's just, it's just like <laughs> like very clear abuse and they will say anything <laughs> like you want them to say to make it stop but like i brainwashed not, them <laughs> they yeah, did what i wanted <laughs> they're not convinced you yeah. didn't glamour them like they're they're they want it to stop don't want to be shocked <laughs> In an unpublished paper called Special Considerations of Modified Human Agents as Reconnaissance and Intelligence Devices, <laughs> Lily <laughs> sought to discover the, quote, covert and relatively safe implantation of electrodes in the human brain for the push-button control of the totality of motivation <sighs> and of consciousness. That's an insane sentence. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. A little push-button control. That's but so it's amazing. totally safe. It sounds safe. And <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. I thought, this sounds safe. Uncovert. He's going to do it without <laughs> you even knowing. Where's the button going to be? <laughs> it's going to be at the gonna back of your head. going to have it in his desk. <laughs> I love the idea, uh, since they like clearly wouldn't be able to have like a remote button back then. He gets it installed in his desk, but there's like a little like electric wire like running out from his desk, like down the hall, like, like eight feet long. <laughs> People no, are stepping like on 800 it, eight hundred feet long. Yeah, <laughs> people are, and like when he presses the button, you can see like the little spark like running down it, like <laughs> all the way down the hall. Like when people light um, a fuse for dynamite, and it like yeah. sparkles all the way down. <laughs> You know, when people light a fuse for dynamite, which my uh -huh. only reference for is Looney Tunes. Yeah. Lily's studies on the brain and mind were ultimately guided by his desire to study and understand consciousness. And in academic circles, there was this question of whether or not consciousness could exist without physical stimuli. Like if you deprive the brain of all external stimuli, like would it just shut down or like cease to work? To test that, Lily invents the sensory deprivation tank. So if no one has ever seen and them- now hippies it, are using it. Yeah. If, if you haven't seen them before, nowadays they use them as like a side, like pseudoscientific like um, therapy thing, basically. You can go to spas yeah. and it's basically like this little pod that is filled with salt water that's usually heated to like the exact temperature of the human body. So that you can't really feel it, and because it's pitch like black, <sighs> yeah, noise canceled. You close, like. you close it. It's pitch black inside. You can't hear anything, and because it's the water is so salinated, you just kind of float. And so, like the idea too, actually, what like <laughs> I want to try what I don't think I think I would get bored. Like I actually need stimuli. I would get so oh well. Like bored. I'm not gonna do it like for more than five minutes max. Yeah, like do, they, you're supposed uh, to stay in there for like there at for an least hour. an hour. It's too no. like I need my phone. They would they would open it up and I would have bashed my head on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> they would have found my dead, salty, bloated, saltwater bloated body like floating around. <laughs> like how is she already waterlogged? <laughs> You've been in here for 26 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm like a skeleton like floating around at the bottom, like like the passengers of the Titanic. So uh, they like doing the research for this, I realized that because they use it in Stranger Things as well as like um, oh, right. what they put Eleven for in. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's more of a reference to the way kind of Lily 
I sort of intended it to be you. It really was. He was trying to see like, well, let's remove as much stimuli as possible and see if the brain continues to work. And it did. Surprise. And, yeah. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. Don't die when you're unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like if consciousness sees it, okay, that's just stupid. Number one, because like <laughs> people get like knocked out and put into comas all the time, where they're like not aware of right of stimuli. Like, and not only does their brain continue to work, but like sometimes they have fantastical like dreams and hallucinations when they've been yeah. knocked knocked out. But I do think like in Stranger Things, I think they are making an explicit reference to kind of like how Lily ends up using the. Yeah, tank later on in his life and career. A lot of new age people like attempt to use it for these reasons as well, to like disconnect from their bodies. I've I've mm -hmm. seen people say that they use it to like astral project. I'm like, no, yeah. this is just the first time you've used your imagination without your phone five feet away from you. Like, so true. <laughs> like, so um, yeah, and like that kind of new agey application is closer to like how he would use it later on but that was like after he got into drugs so in the 1950s mm. he's still sober lily lily's claims about like what the sensory deprivation tank could do were only like kind of strange so he claimed that two hours of rest not necessarily sleep just rest inside the tank left him feeling equivalently rested as if he had had a full eight hours of sleep and that once in the tank, he could have intense waking dreams and hallucinations, and that he could feel the presence of people he knew who were far away, or even the alien <laughs> presence of unknown beings. Again, you just discovered that you have an imagination. Yeah. Like. Because <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't looking at monkey brains for, for a change. Yeah, and your not, brain was like, "What should I do with myself now? Now that I've got you're all not this a witch, time, <laughs> and you're not special. You're you're not casting your mind out into the ether and like meeting other people. You literally are just thinking about people you know. Yeah, like you don't feel the presence <laughs> of Uncle Jerry. You're just thinking about Uncle Jerry." <laughs> While working for Nim, implanting electrodes into various mammal brains and throwing himself down in a mini oubliette, one of Lily's colleagues mentioned to him that small tooth whales have the largest brains. So Lily's like, well, so I love I love brains. The and he decides, teeth. yeah, <laughs> the, the, the bigger fuck. the teeth, the bigger the, <laughs> the bigger the brain. That's right. Wait, no, it's is it big teeth or is it small oh, teeth? Small teeth. Whales or... Small teeth. Yeah. yeah, small tooth whales. So, so the if, smaller if, the if teeth. See, yeah. If you see somebody with big teeth, dumb as fuck. Yeah. Like absolute, absolute fucking freak dumb. Those nasty little nubby teeth, genius. Yeah. Yeah. Gross, couldn't Smart. kiss them, yeah. but <laughs> genius. So Lily decides to start studying dolphins. I'm sure the dolphins are super happy about that. <laughs> Well, yeah, because he's shoving starts... them in a, in a fucking <laughs> deprivation tank. In a tank? <laughs> what happens to a dolphin if we put it in a small, dark room <laughs> with just like six inches of salt water? It comes out. He's like, okay, okay, I know this is going to be weird, but I feel like I saw my Uncle Jerry. <laughs> I feel like he was with me. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what happens when a dolphin has a near-death experience. <laughs> <laughs> so he actually starts his research with the classic Lily move, placing electrodes on their brains. And <laughs> <laughs> he ends up killing a lot of dolphins in the process. Okay, you, you know, in, uh, in like cheap, corny movies and a writer is like, like really trying to get an idea down, but they're not doing well. And there's like a garbage <laughs> bin with like, like crumpled paper <laughs> overflowing. And they yeah. do like a shot of that. I'm picturing that. A giant dolphin But bin. like a dumpster <laughs> with like a thousand crumpled dolphins Tails laying all around out of it. it. <laughs> oh. But they're crumpled. I need, I cannot stress that enough. They're crumpled up like a piece of paper. Like these dolphins have been used up. <laughs> oh, it's it's very funny and also very sad. 
uh, as so... a vegan, this is so funny. <laughs> Like, as a vegan who hates animals this episode is hilarious well like my conscience is clean so i get to laugh at this i'm already doing my part it's the people who are like eat eat like veal or whatever who should feel bad about being like i yeah. can't believe you do that to a dolphin i'm like okay miss hypocrite yeah like, i can't believe you do that to a baby cow <laughs> we at all least a dolphin lived its believe. whole life yeah well <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I think we all live our whole life. <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes life your whole is life is like short. two years because like some Aww. psycho decides to like grab you and shove electrodes in your head. Yeah. And all of this shoving electrodes has to be done unanesthetized because dolphins are not unconscious breathers like humans because, you know, they live in water. <laughs> so like. Oh, yeah. They are the smartest animal. <laughs> they like, die if they go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they they literally have to like they have to consciously choose to make every breath that they take so if you knock them out they just stop breathing oh and God. they die that sounds so fucking stressful tiresome. yeah like incredibly yeah they don't get it they don't get eight hours of sleep i think they just God, do little cat like naps a, they have like a wake apnea <laughs> a wake apnea <laughs> like that's no okay so <laughs> One of the dolphins Lily ad- inadvertently kills, at least according to Lily, just before it dies, makes a few dolphin squeaks in its death throes. And Lily interprets this as trying to mimic the speech patterns of his fellow researchers. So he basically has this like mad scientist eureka moment. And he decides to find out if dolphins can be taught to understand human speech. I love the dolphin dying <laughs> and like looking at him and being like, congratulations, you just alienated a major YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> just like, fucking shits itself and dies. <laughs> and on that, <laughs> should, we, should we take another break? Yeah, let's take a break. I need a break. And we're back. Now, we've known that dolphins are kind of clever for a while. Since Roman times, dolphins have been known to drive fish towards fishermen waiting on the shore, like net fishermen waiting on the shore, and like kind of signal to the fishermen to throw their nets because the dolphins would like catch some of the fish that got disoriented by the nets. And then, so like, Back in ancient Roman times, like teamwork. dolphins and fishermen would, would yeah, they teamwork is dream work. So we knew that they were like kind of smart and could sometimes, yeah. like dogs, kind of like semi-domesticate themselves. So in the late 1950s, some people, mostly people who worked on or near the sea, knew that dolphins could like organize and could to an extent communicate to one another. But again, like in the same way that dogs can't, like a dog can bark to you and you know it's trying to yeah, tell yeah. you something. Um, they're not like organized. <laughs> like, yeah. They're just like, you're over there, I'm over here. Like, yeah. I want, I know you do this thing and I want you to do the thing. Yeah. Play fetch. Do the thing. Like, do the thing. Do la, the la, la. thing. Do the thing. <laughs> that's a very good dog. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's what they sound like. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> It's like when you hear like what animal sounds sound like in another language and you're like, oh, do you want to know what a chicken clucking in Finnish is? I suppose I do. Cut, cut, cut. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> it's weird, I right? mean, I believe, I believe that they it think is. that. Yeah, cut, 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 cut. But, but no. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, so we've known that they're kind of smart for a while, especially people who lived like near the sea. But the idea in popular culture that dolphins are this incredibly intelligent species comes almost entirely from John C. Lilly. And 
more specifically from a couple of books that he published in the 1960s about his dolphin studies. Uh, the how first one was called Atomic Bottlenose Dolphin. Uh, yeah, exactly. How to? How, oh my God, dope. That's got to be. <laughs> I've never watched a, a James Bond, but that's got to be a villain in a James Bond, like an atomic bottlenose dolphin, that's right? Amazing. It's got to be. It sounds like it sounds accurate. Know. Yeah. I've never watched a movie. I don't watch media designed for men because I'm a feminist. <laughs> so the two books were Man and Dolphin, Adventures of a New Scientific Frontier, and The Mind of a Dolphin, Non-Human Intelligence. When John C. Lilly approached NASA for funding of a new facility to study dolphin communication, he basically pitched it and they agreed to fund it on the basis that the study of dolphin communication could potentially help NASA to communicate with future extraterrestrial life forms. So there's kind of like two ideas behind this research. The first one is actually kind of rational and cool. And the second one is less so. Well, like the I first... get that, like this isn't a, a communication style that is completely different from humans. So studying it could allow us to understand other communication styles completely exactly. different from humans. But these bitches would be like gas. Like <laughs> they would, <laughs> like they're not going to be like. Yeah, some haven't they seen with, a like, rival? <laughs> two eyes, two eyes, a nose, and a mouth being like. <laughs> Like, haven't they seen you... a rival okay so yeah the first is exactly what you were saying like the folks at nasa and some of the marine biologists that lily brings onto his project believe that by studying the way another species namely dolphins communicates with one another we will be better equipped to understand or decode alien language if and when we the we being nasa ever do encounter <laughs> extraterrestrial life so that, like, makes sense. And, like, you know, NASA in the 1960s, like, massive budget, that seems like the kind of side project that they'd be like, yeah, we, yeah. we'll definitely give give you some money for this. Okay, so the second is that we can teach dolphins to speak English through their blowholes. Do they have tongues? No. In their blowholes? They just have a hole. Yeah. Do, have they ever spoken before? <laughs> no, they can make sounds through their blowholes. But like you've heard dolphin yeah. sounds. I'd like that to see somebody at NASA I'd like to see somebody at NASA speak through their fucking asshole. Like those make sounds too. Bitch. We make sounds through our assholes too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk out of your goddamn urethra, you fucking asshole. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so NASA is very on board with the first part. NASA is like, yeah, that is like so a wait, valuable use of our- So wait, the second part wasn't NASA. That was Lily. The second part was Lily, okay. Yeah, the I second was like, part was Lily. We need, we need to clear out the people working at NASA because these are not the great minds that we need to achieve yeah, no. like space travel. He approached, okay. he, basically, he basically pitched it to NASA with both of those ideas and they were like, that first part, is really interesting and we, sounds we cool. can actually sign off yeah. on that yeah <laughs> please don't put the second part in your grant proposal <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so he gets he also gets additional can I just funding say, this man was stupid <laughs> this man like... was a scientist <laughs> this man was a dartmouth educated <laughs> doctor well to be fair his father did donate a lot of money. <laughs> I know <laughs> that was after Caltech, he got though. in, but yeah. like, oh, okay. only to Caltech, not to Dartmouth. He didn't want okay. him to go to Dartmouth. He wanted him to go to Harvard. So he also he also gets funding from the U.S. Navy to study dolphin sonar because the Navy assumed that their sonar was better than ours, and we can't let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> not in the space race with the goddamn dolphins. The dolphins. <laughs> The dolphins are beating us. <laughs> <laughs> They're oh laughing at us. <laughs> John Sonar, like smashing his fist out on his desk, <laughs> being like, this is unacceptable. So in 1958, Lily established the Communication Research Institute on St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands in order to study human dolphin communication and to a lesser extent, dolphin-dolphin communication. 
Soon after, Lily divorced his first wife, Mary, and remarried a woman he met on the island, Liz, who eventually relocated. Later, <laughs> uh, Liz eventually relocated to Miami, Florida to work at a dolphin brain lab that Lily had also established there. So he's got like the main institute in St. Thomas and then there's an additional dolphin brain lab where they're still like putting electrodes on dolphins brains in Florida. Where and Liz is Liz is in charge dolphins. of that. Well, I don't know where they got all of them. I will tell you where we got the ones that live on the um, institute though in just okay. a second so the the institute in the virgin islands was the center of their research on dolphin communication so there were three dolphins that were kept at the institute on saint thomas two female dolphins named sissy and pamela and one adolescent male dolphin named peter so they were all from marine studio which is now called marine land and it's a chintzy Florida tourist trap that housed marine mammals. And all three dolphins had had roles in Flipper. I don't know if it was the 1963 film or the 1964 television series, but all of them were dolphins that were raised in captivity in a tourist trap and were like dolphin actors. Did your marine land have the same theme song as my marine land in Canada? Which oh, is like, I don't know. Everyone loves marine land. I don't know. Which Maybe they're all true. part of the same company. <laughs> like I will say right now, that's very much not true. And mm. it seems like really, I guess, what's the opposite of sub? Like above liminal messaging. Super, <laughs> Super liminal. Super liminal. Everybody, everybody loves marine land. And I'm like, well, that's a <laughs> So they were they were like very good subjects uh for your study for marine wildlife these like three dolphins that were raised in captivity they're like, yeah they're gonna do whatever really. the fuck you want <laughs> really really good way to learn how dolphins communicate with each other is take three dolphins Absolutely. raised in captivity in a tank yeah. and see how they communicate with one another this is how that whole alpha pack leader wolf shit got right started. they only yeah. studied ones that were like living in a zoo it's like yeah, oh yeah they then... don't actually act that way when um <laughs> it's like it's like raising a bunch of children in a basement and then being like this is how children behave and it's like well <laughs> only the ones that are abused <laughs> they you <laughs> they usually don't use their eyes to navigate they seem to have a really strong sense of smell and hearing <laughs> like well no those are your cave babies like <laughs> the other scientists lily hired to work at his lab like the scientists at nasa and the navy were far more interested in studying intracommunication between dolphins than teaching dolphins how to speak english so they were mostly mm -hmm. focused on that uh, but luckily for lily a random 24 year old woman named margaret howe randomly showed up at the institute one day after hearing that they were keeping dolphins there so you know she's like living on the island uh, uh, someone was uh, like there's uh, this house with dolphins no. go look at it yeah. i don't trust her it's the beginning uh, of a, a horror movie uh, i'm so i'm gonna say it uh i'm not attracted to her her behavior is very <laughs> weird red flags all around like <laughs> <laughs> I heard you got dolphins in there. Can you I have dolphins a in there? Um, <laughs> uh, actually, who are, who are you? Sorry. Um, and why do you want to touch my dolphins? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the director of the lab, Gregory Bateson, met with Howe and gave her a pen and paper and asked her to observe the dolphins and write down her observations. He acknowledged that she took good – this is, like, on the day she shows up. She's like, hi, I, I heard you have that. dolphins in there. And he's like, swam take this pen and paper. Swam to the left. <laughs> Later on, swam to the left some more. Then swam to the right. That's <laughs> it. Bubble you came out of left nostril. <laughs> you now have a job, Kaylin. <laughs> he acknowledged that she took good and detailed notes, and he offered her an unpaid position at the Institute helping teach the dolphins <laughs> English. <laughs> her husband coming home being like why is the house such a mess like you were home all day like we had no errands to run she's like oh i must have fallen asleep he's like, why do you smell like dolphin well she is actually unmarried at the moment so she's oh, okay. a single 24 year old 
who show and she's very attractive Red flag. <laughs> who shows up at this lab and is like can i see your dolphins and the guy was like you now have an unpaid job as a scientist she reversed the the old hag from beauty and the beauty and the beast she showed up knocking on the door asking offering help and being beautiful instead of showing up looking like <laughs> yeah. old and crusty and asking That's for help right. honestly it feels like that probably works a lot better <laughs> Just like and some like, hot girl showing up, and be like, "Can I work for free?" And the twist is, she's a she's a freak inside, whereas the oh yeah, the old lady, the crusty old lady from Beauty and the Beast, was secretly beautiful and just kind of yeah, um, mean. Oh yeah. my god, she should be on this podcast. She was a little petty. <laughs> yeah, Peter, the youngest dolphin, quickly became Howe's favorite. In an article for the Guardian, she describes mm-hmm. the three dolphins. Quote. Sissy was the biggest, pushy, loud, she sort of ran the show. Pamela was very shy and fearful, and Peter was a young guy. He was sexually coming of age and a bit naughty. I knew it was going to be weird. (laughs) As soon as you said she described all three of them, I knew it was going to be. And she hates that first dolphin. (laughs) She She really does. (laughs) She walked in every day and was like, hey, Sissy. That's my rival. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Pete. Hey, Tiger. <laughs> Ooh, you know Peter paid attention to Sissy in a way that, that Margaret Howe did not like. Her, her <laughs> sitting there, like, crumpling up her paper, like, snapping her pen. Uh, as Bateson carried on his research on dolphin-to-dolphin communication, Howe set to work trying to teach the dolphins to speak English. She saw <laughs> she saw herself as taking on a kind of parent-child relationship with the creatures and eventually became frustrated with the fact that, unlike a parent, her work came to an end each day and everyone got in their cars and drove home. How <laughs> felt <laughs> that the dolphin's English lessons you would know what progress- I hate about work? It ends. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if I if I could work at home? <laughs> All the time. Yeah. If I could really be this dolphin's mommy. This sexy little dolphin's mommy. (laughs) Hal felt that the dolphin's English lessons would progress far more swiftly each day (laughs) if she was with them 24-7. That's the problem. She's just not applying herself enough. It's just that when she leaves, they forget everything that they learned. But if she never leaves, then they'll never forget. You know what? I feel like if I just had a little bit more time to push this rock up this hill, I would get to the top of the hill. The problem is that I have to go to sleep each day. So (laughs) she approached Lily with a plan to waterproof a house by covering the walls with plaster and flooding it so that she could live with the dolphins full time. Lily... Was obviously fully on board. Absolutely. (laughs) He was like, fuck yes, let's do it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm going to cry. I just, I, I just, I, I, (laughs) it's weird that you would do it in a house. Well, like, you gotta why live wouldn't somewhere. You, you gotta have a roof. Well, why over your wouldn't head? you just bring a fucking <laughs> cot into the research center? It seems so much easier. Less, you gotta flood less the house. flashy, of course. You gotta flood the house. No. <laughs> <sighs> oh. The best part is that this wasn't even like a scientist. No, it's just some woman she, who was like, I need to spend more time with the dolphin. Woman just some horny in. woman. <laughs> Okay, so this is a really good cliffhanger. Let's let's go to ads. Can we get ads for like like a home pool system, like a pool system, an indoor like a jacuzzi, pool, jacuzzi, yeah. indoor pools, indoor saltwater pools. Okay, so one, welcome back. Two, you know she was at home that night 
when he approved it, like packing her stuff and writing in her diary and being like, we reached Dear a new stage diary. in our relationship. <laughs> Peter and I are moving in together. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to take care of his dumb bitch sister, Sissy, but I think in a couple of years she'll be ready to go out on her own. And if not, <laughs> we could always slip a little something into her fish. <laughs> I feel so bad because on the one hand, like this woman did end up going through hell because of, you know, the eventual dolphin masturbation. But on the other hand, she did not fucking help herself. <laughs> like... I mean, she gets treated very poorly by the media and like, I don't know, but like well, at the same time, why little did, freak. don't describe him as a little bit naughty. <laughs> it's weird. Her, her letters to this little freak are like easily outshining James Joyce. Like at least he was being a freak about his human wife. Yeah. You're allowed to be a little it. freak about your human wife. I believe in marriage equality, but like between people. Yeah, I I think we're probably bravely coming out against like, bestiality. Yeah, I mean, you know those people who like fall in love with like a monument or like a bridge or something. I think you should be able to marry a bridge. I think if you want to put mm-hmm. change your last name to Bridge and like marry the San Francisco Bridge if that's a real thing like I feel oh like should, the gold, Golden Gate my name like I feel Hoots like... <laughs> Golden Gate Bridge yeah Sounds like gorgeous. I think that's fine I don't think anybody gets hurt by that the city should probably get some money that should go yeah. towards like some you have to pay them like a hundred dollars or something yeah yeah but get otherwise people off the street. Like, yeah sure but maybe not animals no nothing alive unless it's a person of like legal consenting age right so it was decided that only one of the dolphins would live with Howe in the flooded mm-hmm. upper part of the Institute's facility for a period of 10 weeks so that she could teach it English, while the other two dolphins would remain under the observation of the other researchers who were studying dolphin-to-dolphin communication. And Howe decided that obviously the dolphin that was going to come with her to the flooded studio apartment was her favorite pupil, Peter, the naughty adolescent dolphin. <laughs> She had this whole <laughs> thing planned out. That day, she walked up to that door to knock. She knew this was coming. This was what she wanted mm-hmm. from the beginning. Like, So in preparation for this this new part of her job, she went and got a pixie cut. She swim? Oh. No, she went and got a she went and got a new. She got her hair redone. Not <laughs> She's her like, being I'm, like I'm Pete try a seems new to like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dear diary, Pete seemed to like my new hair. <laughs> Took him a second to recognize me. I guess it did its job. <laughs> <sighs> she then helped Lily design and renovate the upper floors of the institute into a flooded apartment, which had deeper areas. Oh, that- okay, okay. So they didn't. So it's just part like of buy the a house and move a dolphin to it. Okay. It's not a new house. It's the the facility that they already had, but like they they decided that the upper floors that they would okay, separate gotcha. him and like they would go live together in privacy for for a period of ten weeks. So they like it, they made it so that it had deeper areas that Peter could retreat to and places where How could kind of climb up out of the water. But most of most of it was just submerged in about 18 to 24 inches of water. Wait, she was in the water too? Yeah, like up to her knees I most as- of the time. I assumed that like, you know how people in, in those days and ages had like recessed living rooms? Like you would have to go down. Like, oh, steps, right, right, right. The living room I think that was a little bit more 70s. Like a deeper 70s. version of that. I think that was more 70s. Um, But no, like, uh, they basically flooded the entire thing. Again, they made, like, they made deeper parts that he could get into. And, like, her bed, I think, was above, like, the water. She could climb up out of the water onto her bed. (laughs) Night, night. Her bed. And there was, like, a desk (laughs) suspended from the ceiling (laughs) that she could, like, (laughs) climb up onto. Unhinged, and the rest Science of the time, hilarious. <laughs> the rest of the time, she was like up to her knees in water, and he was in only two feet of water. <laughs> like, this is this is so unhinged. It's crazy. The way I would have walked by and just kicked a toaster into that thing, take care of both of these <laughs> freaks. 
<laughs> so I'm going to send you a picture of Margaret Howe in her flooded house with Peter. Okay. With her new That's, pixie cut. It's literally fucking insane. <laughs> Yeah, so the like it looks like there's like a little bit of a ledge that she can climb up onto oh out of the water. I want this bucket that says Peter on it. She's sitting at her she's sitting at her desk that's suspended from the ceiling on a stool that is in the water. This is so good. <laughs> Unhinged. So dolphins, like we kind of discussed before, don't really sleep the way we do like eight hours at a time. So for the first few weeks, Peter spent much of the night screaming at How and splashing water at her <laughs> while she slept. Iconic. Just a dolphin screaming in your ear while you're trying to sleep. <laughs> Wake up, bitch! It's like my cat. <laughs> She's dying! <laughs> Here, let me splash you! Let me revive you! <laughs> During the day, Howe would carry on with Peter's English lessons, but she found that he struggled with certain sounds, especially the M sound, like in her name, Margaret. So yeah, she came because up. his blowhole doesn't isn't a mouth. <laughs> she came Margaret. up with <laughs> she came up with an ingenious solution. Kaylin, no. can you Did guess she make what it lips? is? <laughs> Did she make him little lips? No. Did she make him a little tongue? Her she so they can kind of move their blow, blowholes a little bit. So she didn't make something for him. She was like assuming that he couldn't see her movements. So her ingenious solution was a bowl, fish bowl over her head. No, she put on clown makeup. <laughs> so I'm gonna send you a oh, video. To accentuate the lips. Yeah, I'm gonna send you a video. Oh it God. should be starting at about the 1 minute 44 second mark. Oh, it's good. It's so good. <laughs> She's such a freak. <laughs> so she has the bottom half of her face painted white, and then she uh -huh. has black lipstick on, which is not working for her, I will say. <laughs> uh, and he's looking at her like, what the fuck is this bitch doing? Yeah. He's literally, he's looking at her with his one eye, like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this crazy bitch doing? I, I love the idea that the reason why he's not speaking English is because she's, it's her fault. <laughs> like She needs to have some clown face, face paint on and then he'll speak English. This is, this is patriarchy, though. Like, why is a woman being blamed for the act of, <laughs> for, the, for uh, the the failings of a male dolphin? That's, it's so true. It's so true. Like, now, as Margaret Howe described him, Peter was an adolescent dolphin just coming into sexual maturity and and a bit naughty. So he was he no, was a horny uh... teenager. He was a horny teenager. And dolphins in general are kind of like infamously one of the few species that engage in sexual intercourse for recreation. And they're like kind of like the sexual predators of the sea. Like everybody dolphins knows are rapists. dolphins are rapists. Yeah. yeah. Dolphins are rapists. It's, people are like, fun fact, <laughs> dolphins are rapists. And I'm like, I don't know that it's fun. I think it's novel to some people. But I yeah. And not even that anymore. I think it's like a very no, we well all know. Known. We all know all what seen, they do. We've all seen that episode of King of the Hill. Come on. So Peter's sexual urges are kind of a big deal. And he starts to he starts to get them. Like whenever he starts to get them, he basically starts abusing Margaret Howe, like biting and slapping her legs, leaving like lots of scrapes and bruises he's like leaving this woman with contusions oh because he's so horny oh my god um, girl leave him <laughs> so there was like again this was like the upper part of the institute so there was essentially yeah. like an underwater elevator system um separating peter and the apartment from the other dolphins in the lower part of the facility so at first when peter would get like his little dolphin erection uh she would like stick him in the elevator and send him down to um sexually assault the two female dolphins for a little while and then of bring course. him back up to 
learn to speak English. She was definitely not a girl's girl. I can tell you that. <laughs> no, she was. Yeah. So after, but after a while, this started to get too disruptive because Peter, Peter was wanting to rape too many times a day, I guess. So eventually Margaret Howe just resorted to jacking him off five or six times a day, presumably while wearing clown makeup. <laughs> I- <laughs> I am an abolitionist. Sorry, I was an abolitionist. <laughs> this clown, it, the, like, this is. They were assaulting Just each other. Just having your face painted like, like a mime, jacking off, jacking off a dolphin. Oh, they. I'm sorry. Both of them need to go to jail. <laughs> like, I mean, put a bullet in Peter's head. And put Margaret in the fucking, what's the one that's on an island? Very famous, uh, fucked up American Oh, prison. yeah, Alcatraz. That one. No, it's surrounded by water, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, she would love no. it. <laughs> no, so many elephants. Sick, but we, need to, we need to put her in the driest <laughs> fucking prison the we can find. <laughs> so, okay. The dolphin hand jobs. Like we said at the beginning, that's like the part that you were familiar with. I hate this with. fucking podcast. <laughs> so, they- <laughs> the dolphin hand jobs. They're the part that everybody knows about this story because it ultimately gets reported on like very luridly in Hustler magazine and like the well, article. Well, it's salacious. Yeah. And the article that they write has got like this really disgusting illustration. It's like it is misogynistic. No. Like, this disgusting illustration of her like naked fucking a dolphin. Um, okay. With I'm her sure vagina. She her- She's like, not I wasn't, her- not I wasn't clown naked. Makeup. I was wearing clown makeup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it ends like this article brings a lot of notoriety to the study it kind of dis- discredits everything else that they were doing and yeah i would think so like one part of me wants to be like that is a shame because like jacking off large mammals is kind of like also a part of our animal agriculture industry so it's like it's like again as a vegan i'm above it all and yeah. i can judge <laughs> I, I just feel like, yeah, people pointing and laughing at this need to take a like a good hard look at like everything else involving mammals. Like, yes, having to like having to stop a scientific study because your sub your animal subject got too horny is like actually a pretty common thing. But on the other hand, she was like putting on clown makeup and jacking off a dolphin <laughs> while trying to teach it English. For free. And then, and then going to- This is to, all for the love of the game. Yeah. And then in <laughs> interviews being like, yeah, he was sexually coming of age and a bit naughty. Like, girl, no. Just be like, yeah, he had, you know, he he had these urges and he was eventually we decided- Yeah. It was ruining the study. Like, don't be weird about it. Why are you being weird about it? Margaret. I know. Margaret. Margaret. And also, why didn't you just take a- different dolphin and use that one study one of the female ones yeah. oh my god she was like i would but sissy and not sissy would never work with me <laughs> choose pamela I, yeah but no peter was her favorite margaret howe also doesn't help herself a lot in describing the practice of relieving peter's urges oh no quote no, I wasn't. Oh, a- no, no, no. <laughs> the second he said, like, Whoa, I just, no. End quote. That's it. <laughs> you no, know, you have to We're listen to this, this. Kaylin. You have to listen to this. <laughs> There's no fucking content warnings for you. <laughs> Everybody else can skip forward 10 seconds. <laughs> quote I wasn't uncomfortable with it as long as it wasn't rough. <laughs> it would, It would just become part of what's going on, like an itch. Just get rid of it, scratch it, and move on. And that's how it seemed to work out. It wasn't private. People could observe it. Peter was right there, and he knew I was right there. It wasn't sexual on my part. Sensuous, on perhaps. My part. <gasps> it seemed to me that it made the bond closer. Not because of the sexual activity, but because of the lack of having to keep breaking. And that's really all it was. I was there to get to know Peter. That was part of Peter. Some of it, like, saying, like, it was just 
an itch, get rid of it, scratch it, move it on. Like I, if it, if the, if the quote had ended there and hadn't included all of the yes. other shit, like why do you have to say it wasn't sexual on my part? Well, sensuous maybe. What about it was sensuous? The way That's she worse. had to stop herself and be like, well, well, I mean, <laughs> you I actually, like... <laughs> you can keep that to yourself, queen. Yeah. What do you mean? It was still sexual. You were still jerking him off. The problem is that it was sensuous. The yes. problem is that you were like, this is really sensuous is worse. My bond with you, Peter. Yeah. Like, sensuous is worse. Sensuous stop implies it. sensuous implies like sexuality and romance. Yeah. No, 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 no. Gross. No, I Gross. don't. Gross. Some of this is misogyny, but like sometimes that's okay. <laughs> well on this podcast <laughs> yeah well i mean like there there is no there's nothing i can say about this that is not you dirty little freak yeah like, you describing it as freak. i'm sorry like describing it as sensuous How like many... this is what makes you more of a <clears throat> sick freak than like people people who like go look up octopus hentai or whatever they're like no i just find it hot i'm into sexual stuff yeah. but like being like i i find it like sensuous like engaging in the sexual activity with this animal is like jail go that is animal abuse now now it's stopped being like we just have to do this for the study to carry on and it started being about you and that's weird I can't do this with you again, girl. Like we can't keep, we can't keep, like we told you like this can't be hot for you. You need to stop being in love with this dolphin. Also this like up. how long I want to see a timeline. I want to see day. She knock, knock, knocked at that door to like, it was all pretty how quick. many days. I don't like, know how many days exactly, like? but it was all very quick. She, she had a plan. She came there for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when she knocked on that door, she was like, I'm going to teach this fucking little piece of shit to say my name. <laughs> I keep trying to be fair to Margaret and to. Wrong podcast for that. Yeah. I, I, I can't like Margaret is not helping herself. I am being fair. <sighs> yeah. Don't touch a dolphin's dick. How about it's wrong. that? It's wrong. <laughs> Put it back in the osh. Like. <laughs> Do the right thing. Don't fuck a dolphin. Yeah. So one of the people who was there to observe Margaret Howe scratching Peter's itch was the photographer for the Communication Research Institute who ended up marrying Margaret Howe and made her remain on the island and have two children together. So he was like taking lots of pictures and video of her jacking that dolphin off and he was like Your clown makeup oh i gotta get God. in on that action well i didn't say she didn't have skills like so i'm not surprised about that yeah uh, i'm just surprised I he didn't marry one of the other dolphins like in this story he's the least weird. <laughs> i i think he's also the least weird because i think he has to be at least a little bit somewhat embarrassed like I couldn't find his first name anywhere, but I do know that oh, his last good. name was Lovett. So she now goes by oh. Margaret Howe Lovett when she gives no. interviews. Yeah. So the 10 weeks that Howe and Peter spent living together eventually stretched into a period of about six months. And to this day, she is convinced that if she had had more time with Peter, <laughs> he'd have been able to speak English spontaneously and with syntax. She's like she's literally slut. she is in interviews like have like talking about like how it's just like the same thing as with a, a mother and a human child and she's like well if you only have six months to teach your kid english they're not gonna learn how to speak if i had had like two years like sure girl most other experts believe based on <laughs> the thousands of hours of audio and video recordings of margaret and peter that peter was very good at repeating sounds back at her and he had no fucking idea what she was saying. Absolutely it, not. Like it was it was literally just Coco the Gorilla before Coco the Gorilla. It was like a combination of optimism, self-deceit, and like positive reinforcement using fish and hand jobs. Like You're so fucking stupid. Like, yeah, girl, he's he's even... mimicking whatever sounds you make because he knows that if he does what you want, you'll jack him off. This is so wild how incredibly 
unscientific all of this is. <laughs> it's sick. It's like, well, she's if it's also true not a babies, scientist. It's, if it's true for babies, then it's true for this dolphin I'm jacking off. So true. Like, so true, girl. <laughs> she she's also not a scientist. She's a random woman clearly. who showed up at a facility full of actual scientists and some of them because they didn't want to work on this project were like, "Yeah, you can you can teach these dolphins how to speak English. We won't pay you." And she was like, "I don't need to be paid." Oh no, don't <laughs> worry. I call collect my payment in other ways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we take should we take a break for ads i wonder if they're gonna yeah. let us have ads on this mm, no And we're back. So the experiment with Peter takes place around like 1964, 1965-ish. In 1961, John Lilly started experimenting with LSD. And again, he has this ethos that first you need to test on yourself. So he starts tripping on he starts tripping on acid uh, and dosing himself with ketamine pretty regularly. He uh, yeah. I mean, okay, in his defense, in the 1960s, like, everyone was doing, especially scientists. Like, he was the government, also probably, like, able to make his own. He so he had government grades because, like, the government was, nice. um, t- was testing a lot of, again, to, like, see if they could brainwash people. The government had a yeah. lot of LSD. So they had, like, really pure, really high-quality LSD, I guess. I don't really know much about LSD. But I know that, nice. like, the kind of LSD that they used was, like – made in government labs. It was good shit. He'd been a sufferer of migraines and he repeatedly tried to cure himself by dosing himself with drugs and climbing into the isolation tank, which like totally seems like a rational thing the first time that you do it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it didn't work and he just kept trying to do it. Like I totally get the rationale of like, I need to do some drugs and be in the dark. an experiment. Right. But like, Three times if you get the exact same result. Like maybe try yeah. something else. Yeah. Like, maybe the LSD doesn't work for migraines. Something else will. I think yeah. you're on the right track with a dark room. Yeah. And drugs. Yeah. Just you got to find the right drug. Back when he'd first created the isolation tank, his colleagues at NIM had actually suggested using LSD in it, and he refused on the basis of not corrupting his research with drugs. He did (laughs) not feel that way by the early 1960s. And uh, by the time that decade ended, he'd claimed to have gone hundreds of consecutive days tripping on LSD and ketamine. He'd also experimented with drugs for the purpose of consciousness opening, writing... It is my firm belief that the experience of higher states of consciousness is necessary for the survival of the human species, which is like all cool and all. But part of the reason he believed that is because he believed that we could communicate telepathically with one another and also with dolphins. Yeah. And also with aliens. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, th- I'm sorry. This is the least surprising thing I've heard in this episode. <laughs> like, sure, yeah, yeah, Let's great. Jerk off the fucking aliens too. Whatever. <laughs> okay, we'll now fill that fill out an apartment with space. <laughs> we'll fill an apartment with space. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all live in there together. <sighs> now, Why the fuck the- not? Right? <laughs> yeah, Since we're here at this point. Who cares? This podcast has like gone up. off the fucking rails. <laughs> <laughs> Lubed up high on LSD. <laughs> let's just fucking do it. Let's, let's just check. I don't off care if you're alien. a dolphin, an alien, if you're Uncle Larry, like <laughs> all fucking bets are off. One of the very common, very famous side effects of psychedelics or effects of psychedelics uh, like LSD is this feeling of like oneness with the universe and yeah. like the feeling that your consciousness is connecting with all other uh, consciousnesses. Um, so you can kind of see like where he got this idea again, like maybe like the first couple of times that he trips, but like 
you are a, a scientist and a brain scientist. Like eventually oh. you got to learn that that's like a, it's just like a chemical process that happens like I don't as know a result if you're a scientist of the if you don't follow the scientific method <laughs> he was but orig- but around this time he starts to doubt like that objectivity exists as well which is bad if you're a scientist i, I so he starts to doubt the scientific didn't method seem very smart is the problem that i'm running into here maybe he, I, like right he thought he could teach a dolphin to speak english through his i think he I think That's he absurd. was very smart. I think he was too smart and then oh, went crazy and, and did a bunch of drugs. No, because he thought this before the LSD. He <laughs> thought he could teach a dolphin to speak English he out definitely of thought he, he definitely thought he could teach a dolphin to speak English before the LSD. But – Like that is – like I'm sorry. <laughs> that, is, that is not somebody who is too smart. He is – I think it's important to be – to hear that – to, to think – could this happen? And then think about it for a couple seconds to minutes and say, no. I think he is the, like, the archetypical mad scientist. Like, I think there was always some crazy in him. We're going to get comments because I'm I'm being sanest by saying this. But, like, I think there was always something in him that was, like, a little bit off well, as he yes. got older that started to get worse. And as he started to do drugs, it got worse. And I, he was brilliant. Like, he was brilliant, but he was well, also, like, unhinged. He was off his hinges. We can agree to disagree on this one. <laughs> or disagree to agree. Which one is it? We both. Agree to disagree. <laughs> disagree I, I'm going to gonna disagree to agree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to frame this in, like, the most negative way possible, but, like... No, this this man, this man was not it. I'm not having it for him. Either way, he somehow managed to like not figure out that like that feeling like, oh, I'm connected to everything. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like A the feeling. chemicals. Yeah, it's the chemicals from okay, the drug you're that you're connected flooding to your everything. brain with. Tell me what like somebody is doing in the next room. Yeah. What are they Have wearing? a sober person sit in the room with you and try to telepathically communicate to them. Yeah. Like these are all like completely falsifiable. Yeah. Things. Like you can test <laughs> this. But he said he was just like, whoa. Like, shut up, nerd. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, you're so embarrassing. <laughs> High people are so annoying. How are you more embarrassing than the dolphin rapist upstairs? Either of the dolphin rapists. The one that's a dolphin and a rapist or the rapist who's raping dolphins. Like, you got two two different kinds of dolphin rapists upstairs oh and God. you're the weirdo here, mister. Like, I love that we're at like the purple people eater stage of this. Like, is it a purple people who eats or... Wait. <laughs> A purple does he just eat purple people crumbs. or does he eat people and he is purple? Who knows? Okay. <laughs> well, we have Scholars both kinds. remain divided. <laughs> we have both kinds. <laughs> and like many people experimenting with LSD in labs in the 1960s, John C. Lilly did not just administer the, the drug to himself, but also to animals. Yeah, pop it in that blowhole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like like the animals like the dolphins at the communication research institute so aside from peter there were two female dolphins sissy and pamela sissy was the bossy one as we know yes. margaret's rival and pamela was the shy sister. and fearful one she was yeah. like the quiet one so Pamela, well, I mean, she lives with her bitch sister and her rapist brother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and this Not psycho okay. half clown. <laughs> she is. <laughs> she is terrified. <laughs> <laughs> she was probably like the normal sister, who was like is like the black sheep in like a family of like absolute freaks. Yeah. It's like if you're like the one who went to college in your family from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like. <laughs> <laughs> she like moved out of the hills that have eyes and like went to Dartmouth. <laughs> and honestly, like ended up worse off than the rest of her family. <laughs> yeah. Pamela was actually shy and fearful because she'd been injured by humans a couple of times in the past. So oh. she did not want to be anywhere near humans again they all came from living in captivity at a dolphin freak show well to be fair 
even the humans that she knew now were like drug addicts and rapists. Yes, like, I would be, I would be like <laughs> She lived in a bad fucking neighborhood. I'll tell you that right the fuck now. It has to be so scary being any kind of an animal being tested on by humans. Like we are just like big scary aliens, like probing them yeah. and like opening their brains and like putting electrodes on them. Like I also love the idea of like these animals are so smart. We should do experiments on them. I'm like, I'm sorry, but like, why don't we experiment on the dumb ones like cats? Like, <laughs> yeah, they don't know what we're doing. Yeah, they don't have feelings. Like, what are we, why are you doing it to like something? Like, do not shove fucking electrodes into the brain of something that you think is going to be able to Sentient. learn English. Yeah. Like, <laughs> So for the first two years that Pamela was at the lab, she darted away from any human who came close to her. So <laughs> Lily's it. solution to get her to chill out was to dose her up with LSD. Just dip in it, put it, put a tab in the water. Uh huh. <laughs> just just chuck it in, and put it in her fish. He claimed that when he dosed her, she didn't dart away from him and stared into his eyes for a full ten minutes. She was like, "I feel so connected to the world." Right now. <laughs> She was trying to communicate telepathically. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, kill yourself. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. Like, and he was like, kill yourself. She's so thing. <laughs> <laughs> they come back. On Monday morning to find all of the humans with like slit <laughs> wrists laying around the pool and just Pamela floating there with pupils the size of like fucking dinner plates. <laughs> I would love that. It would get like reported on in the news as just like a weird death <laughs> cult. Yeah. And it kind of was. But there was another far worse incident involving the dolphins and LSD that Margaret Howe Lovett recalled in a BBC documentary titled The Girl Who Talked to Dolphins. John C. Lilly injected all of the dolphins with large doses of LSD in order to observe their behavior. According to Margaret Howe Lovett, they just sort of swam around and didn't really do anything. Because, you know, maybe they were just, like, enjoying their high or whatever. Like, yeah, wh what right. do you expect a dolphin to do? Like, float? I mean, out of the water, not, like, in the water. <laughs> like, do you, do you expect them to start, like, doing flips or something? Like, like literally, what did you think would happen? He thought that they would be like, hello. <laughs> yeah, they would start speaking English. That's <laughs> it. Like, I used, to, I used to have a friend in high school who would, like, hot box our hamster. And I have to say, the only thing that would happen is that hamster would cough. Like, <laughs> that sounds adorable. <laughs> it was so cute. So, such animal abuse. But, like, yeah, animals that are high aren't going to, like, do very much. Unless it's, like, a fucking elephant going on, like, a stampede. People that something. get high don't really they just do sit anything there. that differently. Like, they lay yeah. there and they're like. Yeah. So that's and then they say like, some things that are probably annoying. Like They just, like, swim around. And they're probably very high swimming around. They're probably when like, I'm in the water feels high, so good right now. All I'm, the, all I'm doing is like, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> the water feels so good. Swimming around. <laughs> mm, it feels so good on my skin. So he got really frustrated that they weren't doing anything interesting when he got them high. Uh, and he stormed away. <laughs> and dolphins have very sensitive hearing because they communicate and get around partially using echolocation. So yeah, John C. Lilly, annoying. annoyed that the dolphins he drugged weren't acting weird, got a jackhammer and started jackhammering next to the dolphin pool in order to get a response. So all they did was act That's distressed because now they're high and you're making a loud, scary noise. And they would like, probably do that whether or not they were high. Yes. Like the... the That's just abuse. That's not science. That's just animal abuse. And like, people abuse. Like, if somebody started jackhammering next to me, I would be I like, know. sir, I'm going to get a fucking knife and slit your throat. Like The level of like petty entitlement and like cockiness. This is just giving like random guy on Twitter with a it's blue just chat. just a white man. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. A rich white guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, I was about to say he would be such an Elon stan. It really depends on which John Lilly we're talking about. Because like as he turns into like more of a drug addict hippie. Uh, I think probably less so, actually. But, like, mid-career John Lilly definitely would have been Like, was he a hippie or was he just a new-age asshole? 
because there's a difference like hippies are like anti anti war and anti establishment new age assholes are like i don't want the government to give me vaccines but also i love trump so like he i think he definitely would have been vaxxed like he believed in science he just also he would tweet well <laughs> he was definitely a new age <laughs> asshole but yeah he would definitely tweet like i am teaching dolphins to talk and elon would be like interesting yeah like <laughs> concerning in part because of his increasingly erratic behavior and in part because of the bad press from the Hustler article, funding dries up for the Communication Research Institute and Lily basically has to close the facility on St. Thomas and helicopter the three dolphins to the other facility in Florida. And according to the people interviewed in the BBC documentary, unbeknownst to, the, to any of the researchers who were working on St. Thomas, the other facility was fucking heinous the tanks were so tiny that the dolphins basically like couldn't even turn around the entire thing smelled like dolphin shit all the time and it was like just horrible and dirty and inhumane and peter had grown so attached to margaret howe that within a few weeks of getting to florida the florida facility he essentially dies by suicide so i mentioned before how dolphins are conscious breathers so Peter swam to the bottom of his tank and just refused to come up and drowned. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Later in his life, John C. Lilly would go on to regret the way he treated the dolphins and say that he'd had no right to imprison them. And he used that word in prison and test okay, on them. Good. And he'd actually become like a great champion for not keeping dolphins in captivity and he campaigned for dolphins to be granted the status of personhood so that people couldn't do to them what he did. Um, so that is all great. And I do want to like say that, but it still isn't like enough to save him from this podcast, you know? Oh, no. People have done far less of it on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. that, far, guy far just, less. Like, <laughs> that guy that lives in my building who never holds the door open because he <laughs> just can't remember that I live here. Like he's he's going to be on it. So like... <laughs> <laughs> other fucked up experiments lily did with dolphins include dropping a paralyzed dolphin into a tank and letting it sink to the bottom to see what it would do it called for help Die? and the oh, other okay. captive dolphins came to its rescue which is very cool but incredibly fucked up on his part uh, and yeah. he claimed that the distress cry that he that it did was the one bit of dolphin language that he had learned it's like i have spent years studying this and the only thing I, know I know how to say sure help me in dolphin they scream help <laughs> <laughs> like yeah that's bad actually like <laughs> it's like me going to olive garden and saying grazie <laughs> oh don't go to olive garden <laughs> i actually know how to say help me in olive garden waiter <laughs> He also peeled back live dolphin skulls and implanted electrodes on the pleasure centers of their brains and gave them a button to press to stimulate the pleasure centers and essentially ended up getting them addicted to pressing the button. So that's cool. Okay, I want one of those, though. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so nice. I think it's called fentanyl. Oh, okay. I'll Google that. Get some later. <laughs> How bad can it be? Ooh. This is nasty. He claimed that when he first stimulated their pleasure centers, he observed their blowholes smile like a mouth. Oh, this sick fuck. I don't He's like, like it. look, they're smiling. And I'm like, <laughs> they are seizing. <laughs> like, he would also do things like get them out of, like, take them out of the water, put them on the ground, like on dry land, and like, <laughs> and be like, their heart rate is rising and they have a bunch of contusions on them. And it's like, yeah, it's because you took a fish out of God, water and put it on the ground, you stupid bug. <laughs> okay, that I find hilarious. <laughs> Not okay, obviously. Its heart rate is up. But. <laughs> No, I just love the idea of like a scientist being like, I wonder what happens when you take a fish out of water. I'm like, we know this. Someone's got to find this, out. You, you are not advancing science by being like, when you take a fish out of water, um, it's in distress. Okay. So this is you why I like, think 
if you're going to go if you're going to go study to become like a smart person, you also need to like I think touching grass should be like part of your university studies. It should be part of your graduate program. Like yeah. you have to go spend some time like living with people who work in a bar or on the docks or yeah. something. And you have to so tell you them the learn... stuff you do. Yeah. So that yeah. like And you need to get real human reactions to, yeah. to your nonsense. <laughs> yeah. So that you're not like, what happens if we take a dolphin and put it on the ground? Oh, its yeah. heart rate is up for some reason. If scientists picked me up and put me somewhere, I would Dropped also- Dropped you on the ground really hard? Yeah. I would also be like, <laughs> ow, my heart rate. <laughs> ow, ow, my bruises. heart rate and contusions. <laughs> also, contusion is a beautiful name for a girl, I will say. Gorgeous. <laughs> Tush. Contusion and abrasion, twins. Oh, okay. That's gorgeous. So cute. In 1968, he took an LSD trip while on vacation in the British Virgin Islands, and he claimed that a whale communicated with him telepathically. <laughs> <laughs> she zapped me, Lily reported. <laughs> she zapped me. I have this never dumb had... Witch. I've never had such a powerful blast of mental telepathic information being shot into my brain. For 20 minutes, she riveted my attention. She had one eye turned up looking at me and then dropped down into 12,000 feet of water and just disappeared. I've never had such an experience since. It doesn't count if you're on LSD. <laughs> She's at it's me. Like She zapped me. It was so good. Okay, I'm going to anonymize this, but I once had someone tell me in all earnestness that they did mushrooms recently and their future self came back in time to tell them that they were going to be a powerful witch in the future. And I was like, do you think that might have been the mushrooms? And they were like, absolutely not. It was It was really me as a time okay. traveler. I'm like, why didn't they tell you something useful? <laughs> Just like in the future, you're going to be so sick. You're going to be sick as fuck. You're going to have all these powers. Like, look, you're going to time travel. And it's like, why don't you tell me the spell? Yeah. Why would you just come back in time? To why don't be you like, get me started? By the way. Get me started with some yeah. basics. You're like, like not helpful at all. Not even like don't cross the street at this intersection on like January 1st or whatever. <laughs> it's literally just like, hey, by the way. I'm going to zap you. <laughs> That's, I'm sorry. She zapped me. She zapped me. <laughs> like, that you, is in my lexicon now. <laughs> you you had a serotonin deficiency. <laughs> you might not that. have even seen a whale. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been just a school of fish or something. <laughs> it was either flotsam and or jetsam floating around. She like, stared up at me. No, she didn't. No. I guarantee you she didn't. What did she say though? Like what 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 was the Well that's the fucking thing. He doesn't say. For 20 minutes she <laughs> riveted my attention. With what did she what? say, girl? Oh my god. She is the and by she, I she I mean John Lily. Yeah. She is absolutely J Lil. Like <laughs> yeah. fucking brain, brain fried. Like, <laughs> I bet I bet if if you shook her, you would hear sloshing coming from inside her head. I bet it's it's like charred. It's now it's boiled oh. down to a char, like the like a pot that you left on the stove for too long, and the rice is all oh, like God. is all charred to the bottom of it. You got to throw out the whole thing. Yeah, this is why, I including the pot. This is why I don't cook food for myself when I drink anymore. Because sometimes I just go to sleep. <laughs> I was making ramen one night, and I was like, I'll just lay in bed and wait for it to finish. And after the third apartment building burned down, I decided I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm setting boundaries yeah. with myself. Yeah. Now I order food. I'm very responsible. <laughs> Let it sit outside. <laughs> oh, yeah. That too. Uh, should we take another break for ads? Yeah. Oh, my God. How much longer is left in this? This is this is our last break for ads. Okay. Last break for ads. Let's get an ad for Grubhub. Uber Eats. Ooh, I'm so hungry. Mm -hmm. 
In the 1970s, John C. Lilly lost his goddamn mind. He started experimenting heavily with ketamine, and one night, he decided to get high on ketamine and climb into the hot tub. <laughs> high on ketamine and a, half, <laughs> and a half submerged in a hot tub. He stood up too quickly and passed out, as you do yes. when you're high on ketamine and in a hot tub, and he nearly drowned. He was saved because at the exact moment he passed out in the hot tub, his third wife, Tony, answered the phone and the person calling was calling for John. So she came down to get him and found him face down in the water. <laughs> and then she resuscitated him with mouth to mouth, which she had no. apparently just learned earlier that week. No. Yes. Don't do it. Let him go. <laughs> Let him die. Let him go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like a lot of people that experience. I think he was death testing her. <laughs> you she think he was faking he, it? She, yeah, he said she learned CPR, and he was like, well, well, I don't think he was faking we'll it. We'll see about that. I think he okay. did ketamine and got in a hot tub and was like... <laughs> On purpose? <laughs> <laughs> was like jumping up and down until he passed, spinning, getting dizzed. Yeah, until and he, he told his friend out. Bob, he told his friend Bob, yeah. wait 30 call, minutes and call yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see if this bitch knows CPR. <laughs> That's so much funnier. She's been bragging about it all week. Hasn't shut the fuck up. I haven't been able to get a goddamn word in edgewise. So like a lot of people that experience a near death experience and are saved by no. some crazy coincidence. John Not C. Lilly this girl going starts, NDE. He starts believing in a higher power. Unlike a lot of people, he doesn't think it's God or his dead grandpa watching over him. He thinks it's a secret council of aliens called Earth Coincidence Control Office or ECHO. What, ec uh, <laughs> what a very totally normal and reasonable to believe coincidence that it's called ECHO and the dolphins he's been dolphins studying echo look at oh yes <laughs> for sure for sure everything is and everything's got to be a little bit dolphin themed yeah yeah oh and yeah it's in English. And they are specifically a council that that deals in coincidences. They're the Earth Coincidence Control Office. <laughs> well, then it all makes sense. It explains it all away. And they have nine commandments, not ten. Do you want to hear what they are? <laughs> Obviously. What am I new? <laughs> I thought you would. One, you must know slash assume slash simulate our existence in <laughs> Echo. So, what? yeah. You, you got to believe. Only true believers. Okay. Two, you must be willing to accept our responsibility and control for your coincidences. <laughs> I'm all powerful. Three, you must exert your best capabilities for your survival programs and your own development as an advancing slash advanced member of Echo's Earthside core of controlled coincidence workers. You are expected <laughs> to use your best intelligence in this service. Four, you are expected to expect the unexpected every minute, <laughs> every hour, and every day, and every night. Expect me when you least expect me. Five, you must be able to maintain conscious slash thinking slash reasoning no matter what events we arrange to happen to you. Some of these events will seem cataclysmic slash catastrophic slash overwhelming. Remember to stay aware no matter what happens slash apparently happens to you. Six, <laughs> you are in our training program for life. There is no escape from it. We, not you, control the long-term coincidences. You, not we, control the shorter-term coincidences by your own efforts. Seven, your major mission on Earth is to discover slash create that which we do to control the long-term coincidence patterns. You are being trained on Earth to do this job. When your mission on planet Earth is completed, you will no longer be required to remain slash return there. Eight, remember the motto passed to us from GCC via SSCU. Don't ask me what that is. I don't know. Cosmic love is absolutely ruthless and highly indifferent. It teaches its lessons whether you like slash dislike them or not. So he also believed, I, I guess that's only eight. I don't know. I copied it from Wikipedia. Nonsense. Yeah. This is He lost some... his fucking mind. 
This is this what somebody is some, screams at you on the street. This is some L. Ron Hubbard shit. Yes. Like you were just saying words to say words. Yes. Too many slashes and as I well. Don't, and I Use don't a comma. think he knows what coincidences means. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing about coincidences is they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that on that. Or is it? No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you control your short-term coincidences and we control the long-term coincidences. Of so course. I, how about that? That that makes perfect sense. That explains <laughs> so much. Makes sense to I me. Would, yeah. He also believes Echo's watching out for him when he falls asleep at the wheel in 1987 and drives his car off of an embankment. He also did that on purpose. He was like, let's see if you're let's see if I'm really in this training let's program really- for life. <laughs> his wife's in the car beside him. Like, I knew that first time you almost died, it was on purpose. I should have let him. Yeah, chasing those I've, NDEs, though. I was like, just so proud. <sighs> he believed that Echo's agents were intervening in human affairs disguised as government officials and manipulating us through our TVs. Well, why wouldn't they just be <laughs> government officials? Why do they have Classic to be fucking crazy. aliens? They had, because they like to wear costumes, <laughs> Kaylin. Oh, okay. Some of us have well, a flair for the theatrical. So did your dolphin rapist friend. Like, she was dressed up as a motherfucking clown. Like, <laughs> dressed as a clown, behaving as a clown. If it quacks <laughs> like a duck, <laughs> if it jerks like a clown. <laughs> Lily was admitted to a psychiatric hospital at one point. I <laughs> should hope so. I <laughs> should hope so. And you know what? I hope they fucking put little little electric shock panels all over his goddamn head too. How about that? I don't that? think they did. I think they just treated him very nicely, gave him some juice, patted him on the head and let him go. And as yeah. soon as he got out, he started experimenting with ketamine again. No. It's not an experiment. <laughs> you're it's, just yeah, doing you're drugs. You're just addicted sir. to drugs. <laughs> When you've done it for hundreds of days in a row, it's not an experiment. <laughs> it's an addiction. What are you testing for? <laughs> like you're starting a religion now. Like this is so <laughs> yes. far beyond science. For three weeks straight in 1974, he injected 50 milligrams of ketamine into his thigh 20 times a day. And he became convinced <laughs> that he was a time traveler from the year 3001. Like your friend. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> You're not a time traveler. You're just on You're drugs. Just Hi. You're just on so much. You're on enough ketamine to kill like a like a literal horse. Six horses. Six horses. Yeah. It's got to be like, so many horses. Throughout the 1980s, he starts wearing a raccoon skin cap with a little tail on it everywhere he goes. Okay, that's cute. That's cunty. I like that. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna show you a video. You don't I have to watch all of it. He just wears it. He wears it in a, a television interview, and I think it's funny. <sighs> He's so frightening. He looks like someone addicted to drugs. He looks like a cult leader. He looks like yeah, somebody. He, sh- who- he looks like both. He's gaunt. He's wearing a coon skin cap. He's got he's got cult leader fo- facial hair. <laughs> I'm sure this will be on screen, but that felt better. Right. Uh, the red leather jacket, the like maroon leather jacket, also is like such a vibe. It's a look, yeah. I'm not mad at it. It is giving crazy. Like it is giving yes. death cult. If if he climbed out of a dumpster wearing this outfit, you would be like, seems apt. Yeah. Lily's third wife, Tony, died in 1986, after which he would never remarry, but he'd adopt younger women. John C. Lily continued doing fucking research on dolphins until his death by heart failure in 2001. Like I said, in the latter part of his life, he regretted keeping dolphins in captivity and he advocated for them politically, becoming instrumental in the passing of the Marine Mammal Protection Act here in the United States 
And his arguments for granting dolphins personhood are currently being championed in order to end dolphin culling in, and dolphin hunting in parts of the world. So some of the activists who are trying to end those practices are kind of like taking on some of the some of the literature that he wrote about how uh, we should grant dolphins the same kind of personhood we grant to people in order to basically make killing a dolphin tantamount to murder. But again... This change of heart was not enough to save him from respect the dead. One of his former colleagues said of Lily, there were those who thought he was brilliant and there were those who just thought he was insane. I, of course, thought he was a little bit of both. Same. And that's Johnson Lily. Not about Lily. him, about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad he's dead. Yeah. And now finally the dolphins of the sea will be safe forever. <laughs> There's probably like 12 the only, in the world. The only dolphin <laughs> rapists that we have in the world now are actual are dolphins. dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Actually, I Margaret Howe is still alive. Oh, great. So you're When she dies, coming. we'll repost this we'll episode. We'll re-release this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll this one's for you, Maggie. <laughs> <sighs> All right. You can find... Us on underscore respect the dead on all platforms. Uh, you can find me at uh, Punish Hoots on Twitter and on YouTube at Hoots YouTube. Kaylin? I'm at Kaylin Conrad everywhere. Uh, you probably don't know how to spell my name, even if you think you do. So link is in the, in the description. description. Mm -hmm. And you can find our editor, Davi Armanino, at DaviArmanino.com. Link also in the description. Okay, love and you, thank freaks. Thank them for sitting through this. <laughs> this is horrible. I'm so sorry. I'm so grateful. <laughs> love you. Love thank you. you. Bye. Bye.